Hi everyone and welcome back to Waterhouse Ford. Thanks for joining us. Um, it's been a couple of days since we did a, a video. It's been quite a while actually. We've been um, focusing on the workshop. Um, as you saw our last video, uh, you see that we've been spending some time putting um, some paint on the walls, which hopefully you can see behind us. Uh, we've also spent a little bit of time putting up some extra lighting in this area. So it's now a wonderful space to work and uh, we're just about ready. Oscar and I are going to uh, have a go at putting back together the carburetor which we stripped, oh, I think it was two or three videos ago. And I'll put links to these videos uh, in, in, in the video anyway. So what we've got, Oscar, is all of the different parts of the, car, uh, of the carburetor. Some of them are the original parts, some of them are new parts. So for example, that's a new drain tap that we that we purchased. Uh, a couple of new screws and little bits that we that we did, um, and if you remember from the previous uh, video as well, the, the 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 base of the carburetor is actually comes from a sacrificial uh, carburetor which we bought. We're going to reuse the the top, the original top, and most of the components, the individual small components, are um, the originals as well. But essentially, what we're doing is we're mixing and matching a combination of some of the original parts some of the, the parts from the sacrificial, sacrificial carburetor and also a few uh, new parts, especially gaskets and that sort of thing. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to put it back together. Um, we may need to speed up some parts of the, parts of the video to make it uh, enjoyable for the, for the viewer, but I um, hope that you'll follow along and, uh, and see how we go. Okay, hmm. what I suggest we do is start with the top of the carburetor because um, Hopefully, well, I imagine that's going to be a little bit easier. Mm. So we'll start with that. So the first thing is um, the, probably the shaft, right? So the butterfly shaft that mm. runs through here, yeah. which is a new one. So this comes new in the kit when you order it from, um, well, I'll, do, I'll go from Agriline. So the first thing we need to do is take the little butterfly out. And um, that's because the shaft needs to go in first. Okay, just like that. Now, it's all a bit stiff, so we need to put a little bit of oil on it. So if you can pop a little bit of oil on there, kind of that end. Okay, and then there as well. Right, and then just pop some down there as well. Okay. That'll do. Thank you. Alright, let's get that in. So that's nice and stiff, which is what we want. So, right, that's quite stiff, so what we do is just push that in with a pair of pliers. Now what we want is the shaft to be, uh, the slot in the shaft to be centralised. And then what we're going to do, we're going to push the butterfly inside there. You know what the butterfly does, Oscar? Do you remember? Um, I think it opens and closes to control the fuel. To control the air flow. Okay. That's absolutely right, yeah. Okay. That's both of them in. And now we just need to nip them up slightly just so they don't come loose. We don't want to over tighten them. One of the challenges we had with this carburetor was that almost everything on here had been over tightened. Do you remember? Yeah. So we don't want to do that again. There we go. Now the shaft is very tight. Tighter than it needs to be. Mm. But it is working. It is yeah, just closing. Yeah. I think it 
feels like it's easing up as it, as you work it. So. Right. Now I've got to remember what goes where. So I know that that needs to go on. We have a dodgy shaft here. Okay, it took a little bit of uh, encouragement, but we finally managed to get that on. Now, the next thing is to pop this on, and that needs to go like that. Okay, so this is going to go down. There's a shaft, this shaft here, goes on there, and that runs down to the bottom of the car, but we'll put that on when we get there. But that's how we know it goes that way. Then there's a, a little washer that goes on top of that, and then a nut. Except that shaft isn't um, perfectly round, so... No, it's half round, isn't it? So how can that grip on? What, the nut? Mm. Well, it's still gripping on the threads on the side. Let me show you. Oh. So it's a good point. The reason why it's half round is so that these things, when they go on, are, um, see, they've got a slotted hole. Mm. Yeah? So that they're always on the same position on the shaft. No matter where the shaft is, that's always going to be on the same position on the shaft. Mm. So it moves with the shaft. But what you want is a round, unfortunately a round nut. So you've only got threads on the, this edge and this edge, but it's still round because the shaft was originally round before they cut the flaps. And that allows the nut still to, to go on. But you wouldn't want to over tighten it because obviously it's only got about a, maybe a half of the amount of thread it normally has. Mm. But again, this doesn't need to be tight, so that's a good thing. Just needs to be nipped up. Just like that, see? Okay, so there we go. That's the top shaft done. We've got our idle adjustment screw in there as well, so which we'll obviously set when we get the tractor running. So that's that one. The next one is this little jet screw goes in here. I um, can't remember which one it is. I think it's the air, main air screw. That just screws in there. Again, we'll get that set when we actually set up the car. And that's pretty much the, the top, okay? Yes. So we'll move now to the bottom, which is obviously the main, main part. Um, and the main thing on here is to get this, again, butterfly shaft and all of that in. So the way this one works, from memory, is we've got... That goes through there, that needs to go on there to meet that shaft that I've told you about. So that shaft mm. goes on there, right, and then that comes through there like that. And then you tighten it. Well, you'll see in a minute, there's actually a slide, it's actually a loose fit, but anyway. So that one goes on there. Before that, we need... So that's the bush that it runs on, that's the spring plate, there's the spring and we've also got another spring that runs at the back. So this spring goes in there, like that, okay, and it sits on, oh sorry, hang on, we need to put this back, don't we? <laughs> so that's the shaft, oh, sorry, a part that the shaft runs through. Just tap that in. Almost there. There. Okay. And then I bought a new screw because the old one, the head on the old one was really quite 
damaged. Um, so we'll get that. We won't tighten it too much at this point. That's probably enough. Okay. Right then, this spring has to run on that lobe there. That and then this bush goes in. Just pop a little bit of oil on there for me, please. Fit. Okay. Right, then this shaft here is through here. It sits between these two. Do you see these two lugs? Yeah. yeah. So it sits between there and there like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're going to get the butterfly in here this one here. You see this one you can definitely see the holes are not in the center right? And if you look at the shaft it's also not in the center. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty obvious which way, hopefully obvious, which way the um, butterfly needs to go. Okay, we've managed to get the butterfly in the right way. Okay, and you see the screw, the screw holes, so what we'll do is get those two little screws in. And again, I bought some new ones because the other ones were really quite badly damaged. You might recall how we struggled to get them out last time. Okay, we just don't want to over tighten these, no need. Just need to be in nice and snug so that they stay still, they're not going to come out. Essentially that's how the, this is for the choke, right? Great, right, so we'll put all these bits back on. So again, remember we got the bush, then the spring, the spring goes, the end of the spring goes in that little hole there. Hold it still. Then we have the plate, and the plate needs to be the right way. You see these these slots are angled, right? So those slots need to grab onto the end of the spring, so it can only go one way. And it's pretty obvious when you're doing it. And then pop a spring into one of the oops. Okay, if you're not as ham fisted as me, you'll probably be fine. <laughs> oh. There we go. Okay. And then maybe put the nut on. Make sure it's going on straight.
just snug it up. Right, that's that. So that's that shelf done. Okay. Next thing is uh, these two little jets. So again, you've got one very long one, and there's only one hole that can go in, and then one short one. Which again, the hole is short, so you can't get those muddled up. Let's get a slightly screwdriver bit. And those have all been cleaned out nicely. And they just need to be in. They don't need to be over tart. Okay, that's that. Right, now this is the main jet, and this is the one that we struggled with to struggle to get out. It goes inside here. Now, the interesting thing is that the, what came out of there was this little red, what looks to me like fiber washer. But what's come in the kit is a silver aluminium washer. Yeah. I'm hoping that that's just a, an improvement that's been made. Um, you can see they are the same size, so because initially I thought, well, that doesn't actually fit over there very snug, but they're both the same. So I'm going to go with the aluminium washer, but I'm going to hold on to the fiber washer just in case. But essentially that needs to go down there and lay flat. There's a surface down there. Can't show it on the camera. But now what I want to do, because on both carburetors I struggle to get these out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of copper grease on the threads of this jet. Now I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because I just don't want this getting stuck in there again. And the good thing about copper grease is that it essentially acts as never sees. It should mean that those threads will never get stuck again. But let's hope anyway. So we'll get that in there. Now the thing with this is because that jet has to go a very long way down and you don't want to damage the threads, you do have to make sure you've got the exact right screwdriver bit and that it's fitting 100% snug in the slot as you screw that jet down. Now, just to be absolutely sure and make sure that, that washer hasn't moved. No, it's still in the right place and that's a good thing. And let's pop that. So feeling a little bit of resistance there. Do this in the bounce. I don't want to damage this jet. Okay. Okay. Use the vast and got that in nice and snug right down the bottom. Um, those threads obviously are not as they're not a hundred percent. And again, we did struggle to get it down, so it's not surprising. Thought I'd managed to clean them up, but um, obviously not enough. Okay. The next thing then is this. Uh, well, this coupling which goes in there uh, over the, the jet, and again, that just just need to snug that up. Doesn't need to be particularly tight. Oops. Just like that, and then for this the uh, the needle. Basically, that lock nut goes over the top, and then you've got this fiber washer that sits over that, or rather behind that, and just essentially holds it in place, but also seals it. 
So that now goes in and screws down. And what you want to do is screw that all the way in until it touches that jet that was just put in, which is there. And then what we'll do is we'll just nip up that, or just bring down that lock nut. Now, we've got an indicator here, the hole. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back two turns. So that's one, two, and I'm going to lock it there for now. And that's the place to start when uh, we're trying to start the tractor. Once the tractor started, or if it doesn't want to start, we'll adjust it a little bit from there until we get the right mixture. But that's generally two turns out. It's a good place to start. That locks that in place, so that's sorted. Now we've got the uh, little drain plug that goes in here. Let's pop a little bit of oil on there. And because it's a TVO tractor, if you're running on TVO all day and you get to the end of the day, the following day when you want to start it, you're going to want to start on petrol, so the general idea is that you drain once you've switched off the tractor, you drain the, uh, what's the, the TVO that's sitting in this bowl, um, and then you switch over to petrol and it refills the bowl with petrol, and that allows the tractor to start more easily the following day. Okay, we're nearing the end now. One other thing that we forgot to do on the top is to put the, uh, the needle uh, valve in. Now that on both carburetors had a thick washer and then a thin washer. So we're going to put the same again, do it, put it back the same way. I suspect that if, um, if it doesn't seal properly, you can probably remove one of those, probably the thin washer, and that would allow you, uh, or you'd add another washer depending on how, whether the, whether the needle is actually opening or closing properly, opening or sealing properly when, um, when the whole thing's back together, but we'll work that out later. So that's in again, just nice and snug, not too. Uh, don't want to go overboard. Right now we're pretty much ready to put this all together. The float just pops in there, and then we've got the gasket which sits on top here. Now what I'm going to do with this gasket is just put a tiny little bit of oil all the way around it, just to help it seal. But also remember. Tractor is not going to be running anytime soon, and we just want everything to stay nice and lubricated. We don't want anything drying out, so we'll just put a little bit of oil all the way around here. Now, while I'm doing this, another interesting thing is this venturi is meant to come out, and that was confirmed by Lance after the last video. But for the life of me, I've not been able to get it out. I've tried everything I possibly can think of without damaging anything and I simply cannot get it out. It should come out, should literally pop straight up apparently, and then what you can do is you can use uh, emery paper on a very flat surface like glass and actually smooth the surface and of course this surface, um, and obviously by doing it on glass you get a very very flat, res flat surface as a result. But I've not been able to do that so I've had to do the best I can because um, I don't want to damage that Venturi. And by the way, that's on both of the carbs. I've not been able to get that Venturi out. So quite interesting that both of them are there. There's evidence of Loctite on one of them. So I think somebody has made the decision to Loctite it in at some point, which is a bit strange. Now that gasket's not quite sitting around that jet properly. Might need to... Just ease that in. Hmm. There's a problem with uh, these aftermarket parts. They don't, not always as precise as the originals.
need to ease that over to make sure that it's sitting down flat. oil on the top edge now. There we go. That should keep it all nice and lubricated. Gasket supple. Right. Now we need to put this linkage on. And it literally just goes in there. And then as we bring these two bits together, it goes through this pipe. Like that. Okay, now we've got these uh, five bolts and again just to um, make sure that nothing gets seized up I'm just going to put a little bit of copper grease on each on the beginning of each one and pop that in. Again, we don't need to over tighten these. They do need to be snug. It needs to be, you know, obviously you want it to make a good seal. You want the gasket to seal down nicely, but they just don't need to be over tightened. So I'm literally just going to close them one quarter turn from where they are snug. Like that. Maybe it's more like a, an eighth, but just so they're gripping nicely. There we go. And that is pretty much it. Uh, in the kit, obviously, we get another uh, gasket for where the um, uh, Carburetor connects to the inlet manifold. We keep that safe for when it's time to, to fit the carb. Uh, but essentially, there is the Zenith 24T reassembled. This probably needs a little bit of tightening up once uh, once we get it going, but we'll get all that sorted uh, once it's all assembled. No need to mess with that now. And uh, you can see the choke operating nicely and then the throttle is a bit stiff I'm hoping that that's going to ease off with 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 use obviously you want this shaft to be nice and snug in here you don't want it to be sucking air because that'll mess up your, uh, your mixture so I imagine that that's a bit stiff just because obviously it needs to be a reasonable a reasonable fit um, but I'm sure that over time that will ease off so there you go. Thank you very much for watching and I uh, hope that's been of interest to, to some of you. Um, obviously if you could, uh, if you like what you see and, and you want to follow along and see what else we're getting up to, uh, it would be good to subscribe. Um, if you click the subscribe button you can also click the little bell button uh, which means that you'll get automatic notifications whenever we publish a new video. We've got some exciting stuff coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to be reassembling the rear end of the tractor. You may recall 
We removed uh, the trumpet housings, uh, the brakes, the crown gear. Uh, we've now uh, ordered the pass for all, for all, you know, for putting all of that back together, and we're going to be doing that over the next couple of weeks. So, stay tuned, and we look forward to some more. Thank you, everyone.